Shabbos, and welcome to Shabbat in the not round. <laughs> this is the music of Shabbat in the round, and if you've not joined us before, um, it's a very beautiful worship experience. As you can hear, we are surrounded by beautiful music, and it will continue throughout the service, carrying us from one prayerful melody to the next. The music of Shabbat in the Round is very much in keeping with our worship tradition. In the Psalms, we are told, Come, let us sing joyously to Adonai. Raise a shout to our rock and our redeemer. Let us come into God's presence with praise, and let us praise God in song. Please participate. This is not a performance-based event, although Glory, John, and Brad are amazingly talented. We are a community of prayers, joining together in the music of praise and blessing, searching for and hopefully finding a sense of peace as we enter Shabbat together. We are also entering springtime a season which is bracketed by two joyous holidays. Purim, which we just celebrated last week, and Pesach, which, I hope you're ready, it's only three weeks out. On the secular calendar, we are in March, designated as Women's History Month. So tonight, we will merge these two calendars as we honor some of the amazing Jewish women of our spring holidays. from 
from a tale told long ago Passed on by the waves and the wind We've made it this far together, you know Come brothers and sisters and sing He debato humanai Shevetahi Kam yachad hine mato umanayim shevet zachim kam yachad hine mato umanayim shevet zachim kam yachad hine mato umanayim shevet zachim kam Gather round and hear the song If you're the wandering kind Cause you can make it alone We leave no one behind Our mothers and fathers Who've weathered the storms Grew strong in the trials of their time so we brothers and sisters, the door, the door, carry on with this song in our lives. Hine mato humanayim, shevet zahim kam yachad. Hine mato humanayim, shevet zahim kam yachad. We'll sing out this song for years to come in a story without an end. For how good it is to be among our brothers and sisters and friends. I'd like to invite Paige Schaefer to come up for the honor of kindling the Sabbath lights. Le hard like ne'er, le hard like ne'er, le 
hardlik ne'er shall shabbat, the hardlik ne'er shall shabbat. Ya elai elai elai, ya elai elai elai, ya elai 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 elai. You may have noticed that there are three candles up there, not just two. We have our two Shabbat candles, of course. The third is a reminder of those people in Israel that are still being held in captivity. We are approaching six months this week since the death the devastation of October 7th, and we want to make sure that we keep them in our thoughts and in our prayers. The first woman I would like to share with you tonight is Esther. Megilat Esther sets up this situation. According to her cousin Mordechai, the king has decreed that all the Jews in, Pol in Poland, in Persia, wrong story, in Persia were to be killed. I'm making sure you are paying attention. Mordechai wants Esther, who is now the queen of the land, to ask her husband to rescind this law, but she's hesitant. She explains the king's policy as, all the king's courtiers and the people of the court know that if any person, man or woman, enters the king's presence without first having been summoned, there is but one law for him and that is to be put to death. Mordechai responds to Esther, Do not imagine that you, of all the Jews, will escape with your life because you are in the king's palace. On the contrary, if you keep silent in this crisis, relief and deliverance will come to the Jews from another quarter, but you will perish. And who knows? Perhaps you have attained this royal position for just such a crisis. Probably the most famous line in the Megillah. Esther's scared. She knows it would mean risking her life to approach the king without an invitation, much less to attempt to persuade him to change an edict he had made. But Mordechai's words, perhaps you have attained this position for just such a crisis, emboldens her. She realizes that she is in a unique position. In fact, she is the only person in all of Persia in this position to be able to act on behalf of the Jews of the empire. Realizing this, Esther says, go. Assemble all the Jews in Shushan and fast on my behalf. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maidens and I will observe the same fast, and then I shall go to the king, although it is contrary to his law. And if I am to perish, I will perish. Well, if you've read the story, or if you were at services last Shabbat, you know that after praying and fasting for three days, Esther risks her life. She approaches the king and asks him to change the edict he's made. To her surprise, the king allows her to come in and asks, what is your wish? Whatever it is, it shall be granted. What I love about Queen Esther is her bravery and her sense of responsibility. She is beautiful and favored, but she is called to make a bold decision, a decision to be silent or to speak up, a choice to back down or stand up. At first, she feels helpless because she knows that she cannot approach the king without being summoned, but that changes when she realizes that Mordechai was right. Everything that she had experienced up until that moment had prepared her to act in just such a crisis. She realized that it was her responsibility to save her people. And she does just that. Mm -hmm. 
Shalom Aleichem Malachi Hasharet Malachi Elyon Mimelech Malachi Hamlachim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Boechem Leshalom Malachi Hasharet Malachi Elyon
was much more than just a sister to Moses. She, perhaps more than any other individual, was directly responsible for his life. After Pharaoh announced that all the baby boys born to Hebrew women were to be drowned in the Nile River, Miriam's father Amram, a leader in his generation, announced that all Hebrew husbands should divorce their wives in order to have no more children. He reasoned that because there was a 50% chance that a newborn Jewish child would be killed, the people should prevent any Jewish children from being born. The sages say that Miriam, only six years old at the time, boldly persuaded her father to reverse that decision. Your decree, Miriam told him, is worse than Pharaoh's. He only decreed against the male children, but you have decreed against female children as well. Her father had to admit her superior logic. Amram immediately remarried Yocheved, and all of the Jewish husbands and wives were reunited. Yocheved soon became pregnant, and Moses was born. Torah then tells us this story. Just a few months later, Yocheved, now unable to hide her infant son any longer, decides to place him in a basket and let him float down the Nile River to the palace in the hopes that one of the women in Pharaoh's household will be kind enough to take him in. But she's too worried to watch, so Miriam goes. As she stands nearby to see what would happen, the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe in the river. She saw the basket floating among the reeds and sent her maid to fetch it. When she opened it and saw the baby, she said, this is one of the Hebrew children. Miriam had to act quickly. She didn't know if the princess would obey Pharaoh's law and toss the baby into the water or if she would be kind enough to save him. Again, Miriam speaks with courage and ingenuity. Shall I go and call one of the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter says to her, yes, go. Miriam went and called Yocheved, Moses' mother. Because of the courage and wisdom of a six-year-old girl, the entire history of the Jewish people is revised from slavery to freedom. First, she was bold enough to tell it like it is to her father, and then to approach the princess of Egypt to save her baby brother's life. 
In both cases, she acted in defiance of Pharaoh's decree, but eventually brought deliverance through Moses to her family and to all Israel. Shall reign, 
point of our Shabbat service, we would ordinarily do the traditional tefillah, including the avot and the givarot, but for Shabbat in the round, we do something a little bit differently. We do a, a silent Amidah in which we ask God for what we need. The song is Adonai, Love Me, but sometimes there are things that we need beyond love. So after we hear the opening verse, I will be inviting you to share your thoughts on what you need God to do for you on this Shabbat evening. you take a moment for your silent prayers. Adonai, love me, please 
is love me I don't know This is the time for us to think of others people in our circle of family and friends who are ill who are in pain or who are caring for those who are ill Our Misha Bayrach list tonight includes Beverly Aronofsky, Vicky Talent, Pat Alberts, Ina Silverstein, Stephen Grau, Mindy Backrack, Logan Knapp and family, Evan Harpold, Shoshana Ham, Lori Fletcher, Kim Botwin, and of course our family and friends in Israel. If there is someone on your heart this evening that you would like to include in our Misha Bayrach prayers please stand and as i turn to face you say their name We rise and join together for Misha Berach. Usually, when we hear about Moses, we think of him as a child growing up in the Pharaoh's palace, or as an elderly man leading the Israelites through the desert for 40 years. But there was another side to him. Moses was also a husband and a father, a family man, like many of you. And as a family man, a wise family man, he looked to his wife for support. Her name was Zipporah, and she was the daughter of the Midianite priest Jethro. The story goes that after Moses killed an Egyptian taskmaster for beating an Israelite slave, he fled into the desert and found his way to the land of Midian. Tired and thirsty, he stopped at the local well just as a group of young women, the daughters of Jethro, arrived to water their flock. He watched quietly as the girls were harassed by some local shepherds, then stood up and shooed the men away, allowing Sipora and her sisters to tend to their sheep. When the girls got home, Sipora told her father Jethro about the stranger, the kind stranger, rather good-looking stranger, who had come to their rescue at the well. Midrash suggests that she was bold enough to say that he would make a fine husband. Jethro must have agreed because he immediately sent his daughter back to the well to invite this man to dinner. 
Unfortunately, according to another Midrash, there was a bit of a hitch in the get-along. When Moses told Pharaoh that he was fleeing, I'm sorry, when Moses admitted to Jethro that he was fleeing from Pharaoh, Jethro, who was an advisor to Pharaoh at the time, threw Moses into a pit and left him there to die of starvation. But Zipporah had a soft spot in her heart for Moses. And in defiance of both her father and the Pharaoh, she secretly brought him bread and water every day. After a year, she said to Jethro, Father, this man has been jailed in the pit for the past year, yet nobody has come around asking for him. If it is good in your eyes, let us send for him and see if he is alive or dead. Now Jethro hadn't known about his daughter's kindness to Miriam, so he was rather shocked. Is it possible for a man to be locked up for a year and survive without food? And Sephora responded, Father, Moses was saved from the Nile and from the sword of Pharaoh. I'm sure that God could have saved him now as well. And sure enough, when they went to the pit, Moses was alive, standing and praying to the God of his fathers. He was taken out, bathed, given a haircut, and brought to the family table for a meal. It was then that Moses asked for Sephora's hand in marriage. She had kept him alive and shown him great kindness, and he loved her for it. Within a few years, Moses and Zipporah were the proud parents of two little boys, Gershom and Eliezer. In fact, it was only a few days after Eliezer's birth that God called Moses at the burning bush, commanding him to return to Egypt immediately and demand that Pharaoh release the Hebrew slaves. I try to imagine that conversation between Moses and Zipporah that evening. As she nurses her newborn son, Moses tells her that he's been called by God to go back to Egypt and free the slaves. He suggests that she and the boys stay with Jethro and Midian, but she's having none of that. She bravely insists that the whole family journey to Egypt together. Moses expresses concern about baby Eliezer's bris, which is planned for later that week, but the parents decide to postpone that ritual until, well, whenever they have a chance. They set out for Egypt the next day, a journey of several weeks. One night, while the family sleeps in an inn on the outskirts of Pharaoh's royal city, Zipporah is woken in the middle of the night by Moses' cries. He is, according to Midrash, being attacked by an angel. And Zipporah deduces that he is being punished for not circumcising their newborn son. So, the Torah relates, Zipporah took a sharp stone and severed her son's foreskin cast it at Moses' feet, and the angel immediately withdrew. Moses was saved. With her quick thinking, Zipporah actually saved her husband's life twice. First, by bringing him food in the pit, and secondly, by giving their son a brit milah. Twice, Moses was saved by this amazing woman. And we continue to be inspired by the many wonderful women of our tradition, Esther, Miriam, Zipporah, and so many others who have shown us the way to be. It's up to us to call ourselves to task, to sing what's good and true, to bring about redemption. It's what we were free to do. For what's the point of being here if we're not moved to change our ways? It's time to live our praise. We are carrying the stories of the ones who came before. What stories will be told of us when we are here no more? We commit ourselves to action. It brings meaning to our days. Aleinu le'shabeach. 
it's time to live our praise. It's up to us to own the vision. We are an answer to a call. It's up to us to live the words we speak for the benefit of all. It's up to us to bow down deeply. There's a broken world to raise. Alenu Lesha Bea. It's time to live our praise. Alenu Lesha Bea. It's time to live our praise. Vanach Nu Korim. Umishtachavim umodim, Livne melech, Mache hamlachim, Hakadosh baruchu. Please be seated. who saw, who saw in tears, will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who saw, who saw in tears, will reap, will reap in joy. It's the song of the dreamer. From a dark place it grows Like a flower in the desert The oasis of our souls Come back, come back where we belong You who hear our longing cries Our mouths, our lips are filled with song You can hear it in our tear-filled eyes Those who sow who sow in tears will reap in joy, will reap in joy. Those who sow, who sow in tears will reap, will reap in joy. Our thoughts now turn to those who are no longer with us. This week, on our Kaddish list, we think of Sandy Ewan, Dr. Lois Abrams, Sidney Adler, Shirley Weiss, Stephen Simon, Arthur Marshall, Doris Munich, and Gertrude Ginsburg. We also observe the yard sites this evening of Troy Bartlett, Cyril Bass, Jeffrey Kichon, Gerald Crone, Pearl Davidson, Jordan Dreyfus, Manuel Ferenz, Rose Gabrieleff, Jenny Gerstler, Sylvia Gertzman, Joseph Gordon, Louis Kaufman, Stephen Levitt, Geraldine Jerry Linker, Martha Manny, Ronald Jack Miller, Anna Moskowitz, Herbert Muskin, Norman Schaffler, Paul Schgerman, Ada Solomon, Joan Phyllis Sperrier, Bess Sundelson, Derek Alexander Thomas, Sherman Titans, Barnett Wayne, and Susan Ruth Weidenfeld. If there's someone you're thinking of this evening for Kaddish or Yartzeit, please rise, and as I turn to face you, please say their name. May their memories be for a blessing. We rise now for Kaddish.
We read together. Yit kadal vit kadash shemei raba, bi'alma divrach herute v'yamlich malchute, b'chaye hon of yomei hon of chaye dechol beit Yisrael, b'galla v'izran kariv v'imru amen. Yehe shemei raba mivarach le'alam umei amaya. Yet barach viet tabach viet paar viet ramam viet nase viet hadar viet halev viet halal shmei de kudisha brichu leila min kol berchata veshirata tush berchata venechamata damiran bialma veemru amen yehe shlama raba min shmaya vechayim aleinu vel kol yisrael veemru amen o se shalom bimramav. Hu ya ase shalom, aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael ve'amru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel and to all the world, and we say, amen. You may be seated. Those who sow, who sow in tears, will reap, will reap in joy. And now I would like to invite Eric Polis up to the BEMA for announcements. Okay, you're stuck with me. Announcements. Cantor Jessica Hutchings' next Lev Lock-In takes place on Tuesday, April 2nd at 7 o'clock. The sacred session is held in a candlelit setting here in the sanctuary. To help you relieve anxiety and stress, please register on the website or the calendar. CNT will present a two-part Zoom series with renowned classics professor, Dr. Kenneth Harrell. Um, this Wednesday, his topic will be the roots of conflict, Roman oppression, and Jewish defiance. And next Wednesday, April 10th, he will discuss the great Jewish war against Rome, both of these Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Please register again on the website or the calendar. CNT's Film Chavara will present a screening of The Zone of Interest this Tuesday, April 9th at 6 o'clock. Again, please register on the website. CNT will welcome its 2024 scholar in residence, Rabbi Barry L. Schwartz, on Friday, April 12th. He will participate in a special interfaith program in the morning and present a lecture during Shabbat services called Reform Jews and Israel Addressing the Generation Gap. There will be a special prenig and onig. You get to eat twice. That's good. And on Saturday morning, April 13th, he will participate in the Saturday morning Torah study and in tefillah. Again, more information available on the website. The CNT Menches are getting ready to enjoy a guy's night out. Steaks and Spirits Dinner will be held Saturday, April 13th at 5.30 here. Guess what's on the menu? Steak and Spirits, while well, you were listening. As well as baked potato, grilled veggies, and some vegetarian accommodations upon request. Uh, bring your own spirits or a drink of your choice. And again, register on the website. You're good at this game. CNT senior schmoozers are going back to the Catskills on Monday, April 15th, after they finish playing, paying their taxes um, at noon. Oh, that's your birthday too, isn't it? April 15th is his birthday. How appropriate. With comedian and Taste of Broadway singer Barbara Brighton, Lux, Bagels, Blintzes, and more, register. Good. Save the date, Justice Michael Cherry Tikkun Olam Community Service Award Champagne Brunch. Wow. On Sunday, April 21st, here at the temple at 1030 in the morning, we will be honoring Drs. Florence and Gar Jameson and Dr. Lauren and Commissioner Michael Naft. Reserve your seat. CNT's 50 Years in the Promised Land Passover Seder takes place Monday, April 22nd at six o'clock in the temple. Delicious meal will be here, brought by Madeline Morris Catering with seasonal desserts and wine. Register on. Very good, thank you very much. 
And um, let's see, Kiddush and Motsi over there with any of our religious school people, any of our students, children, students, or adult students. Let's put that out there. If we have any adult students, um, you know who you are. Come on up. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Baruch Peri HaGafen, Amen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Olam, Hamotzi Lechem Min Haaretz, Amen. And um, Glory. Closing song. Do we have a closing song? We do. Oh, say shalom. Oh, say shalom. Remember, we're not. Shalom, and thank you, Pam. And thank you, Glory. And, and Brad and John. And, and all, all of you. you. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.